to welcome to our reflective service today here at church, online or read at home. It's good to be together again. We also are celebrating communion this morning. Today is the third Sunday of Easter, which reminds me that we are one third of the way through the year already. And it's the first of May, so a pinch and a punch to everybody who wants one this morning. Isn't the year going quickly? We are following the lection, lectionary for today and continuing from last week uh, with, with, with what Michael Penny was saying to us um, and looking at the uh, miracles of Jesus in his appearances. And we are looking at another appearance uh, following his resurrection. So as we are gathered, let us settle, let us worship God. And today in our call to worship, the psalmist encourages his people to praise God because of his lasting favour. That's God's lasting favour, that is. As he answers the prayer of his faithful people. And in our reflection, after a night of fishing and empty nets, the disciples meet the risen Jesus on the seashore and eat breakfast with him. They don't recognise him at first, and it's only after the miraculous haul of fish that they catch on. I think there's a pun there. <laughs> this encounter leads to a moment of healing and transformation, and a new start for Peter, who before the crucifixion had actually denied even knowing Jesus. And so in our call to worship, this morning from Psalm 130. I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths. O Lord my God, I call to you for help, and you healed me. Sing the praises of the Lord, you his faithful people. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favour lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. You clothe me with joy, O Lord my God, and I will praise you forever. Thanks be to God. And a brief reflection on that. Remembering how God has helped us, especially in answering our prayer in difficult times, and then thanking him, is a great way to deepen our relationship with God and so find strength to face the future. In David's prayer, he shares with the people and with us his experience of God's goodness. He encourages us to sing praise to God because he is a gracious God. And even the darkest human experiences have a joyful end, can have a joyful end, with rejoicing in the morning for his faithful people. And the changes God made in David's life, made him want to praise God forever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> let's, let's bow our heads now and offer our thanks and praise to God, which will be followed by the Lord's Prayer. Our Almighty God and Heavenly Father, it is right to remember to thank you that we can gather together like this in your house. And we thank and praise you that when the nets of our lives are empty, you fill them with the abundance of your love. When we are afraid and fall down, you hold out your hand of forgiveness. And when we are tempted to give up, you call us afresh and give us strength for our journey. Thank you for this transformation of our lives and our equipping to love and to serve. And Almighty God, forgive us for the times when life worsens or overwhelms us and we doubt you and your ability to help us and we lose hope. And despite your promises to us, we are sorry for those times when we go our own way and trust more in ourselves and place our hope elsewhere. Help us to see the way you have prepared for us and increase our faith to place our hope and trust in you. Amen. 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 Let's join together to say the Lord's <coughs> Prayer. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And our first hymn is just simply a hymn of praise to God, <coughs> celebrating that Christ is risen. Hallelujah, risen our victorious head. So let's stand to sing, Christ is risen, hallelujah. <laughs>
Almighty God, as part of our worship today, we give thanks to you for all your gifts to us and for your provision for us. And so in our thanksgiving to you, we offer our gifts to you. Please accept our offering, given by the various means and at different times this week. And we pray that they may be used wisely and well for the sake of your kingdom here, through the work of your church, to be a blessing to others. Amen. Our Bible reading this morning is from John's Gospel, chapter 21, verses 1 to 17. Jesus' appearance and the miraculous catch of fish. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish. Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realise that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment round him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred metres. When they landed, they saw a fire burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you've caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, but even with so many the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my lambs. Again Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Thanks be to God for his word. Now for those of you that have not met Joanna yet, Joanna is going to read. Good morning. Este día se leerá la lectura bíblica en Juan 21, 1.17. La aparición de Jesús y la captura milagrosa de los peces. Después Jesús se apareció de nuevo a sus discípulos, junto al mar de Galilea. Sucedió así. Estaban juntos Simón, Pedro, Tomás, Natanael de Caná de Galilea, los hijos de Zebedeo y otros dos discípulos. Voy a pescar, les dijo Simón, Pedro. Y ellos dijeron, iremos con ustedes. Así que salieron y subieron a la barca, pero esa noche no pescaron nada. Temprano en la mañana, Jesús se paró en la orilla, pero los discípulos no se dieron cuenta de que era Jesús. Él les gritó, amigos, ¿no tenéis pescado? No, respondieron. Él dijo, echa tu red en el lado derecho de la barca y encontrarás algo. 
Cuando lo hicieron, no pudieron sacar la red debido a la gran cantidad de peces. Entonces, el discípulo a quien Jesús amaba dijo a Pedro, «Es el Señor», tan pronto como Simón Pedro lo escuchó decir, «Es el Señor», se envolvió en su prenda exterior porque se la había quitado, y saltó al agua. Los otros discípulos siguieron en la barca, remolcando la red llena de peces, porque no estaban lejos de la orilla, como a cien metros. Cuando desembarcaron, vieron allí un fuego de brasas encendidas con pescado y algo de pan. Jesús les dijo, traigan algunos de los peces que acaban de pescar. Así que Simón Pedro volvió a subir a la barca y arrastró la red a tierra. Estaba llena de peces grandes, pero aún con tantos la red no se rompía. Jesús les dijo, venid a desayunar. Ninguno de los discípulos se atrevió a preguntarle, ¿Quién eres? Sabían que era el Señor. Llegó Jesús, tomó el pan y se los dio. E hizo lo mismo con el pescado. Esta fue la tercera vez que Jesús se apareció a sus discípulos después de haber resucitado entre los muertos. Cuando acabaron de comer, Jesús dijo a Simón Pedro, Simón, hijo de Juan, ¿me amas más que estos? Sí, Señor, dijo, tú sabes que te amo. Señor dijo, apacienta mis corderos. Nuevamente dijo Jesús, Simón, hijo de Juan, ¿me amas? Él respondió, sí, Señor, tú sabes que te amo. Jesús dijo, cuida de mis ovejas. La tercera vez le dijo, Simón, hijo de Juan, ¿me amas? Pedro se dolió porque Jesús le preguntó por tercera vez, ¿me amas? Él dijo, Señor, tú sabes todas las cosas, ¿sabes que te amo? Jesús dijo, apacienta mis ovejas. Gracias a Dios por su palabra. Thank you, Joanne, for that. It's lovely to hear it in Spanish. Um, I'm afraid I can't follow that, so I'm going to do it in English, with the occasional bit of double Dutch, I expect. <laughs> I have Dutch friends, I can say. I heard that, Mike. Reflecting on that, even more unimaginably, Jesus appears. This final chapter of John's Gospel reminds us that among all the miracles of the effective pastoral work of Jesus, in the Gospel we are made aware of his approachability, his sensitivity and his perfect knowledge and insight into the character of people. He is, after all, the one through whom all things were made. He knows you and me so well, it's frightening, but it's just in his confidence, of course. He doesn't tell everyone else. So it makes it wonderful. In this chapter, Jesus appears for the third time to his disciples following his resurrection. It was the seventh appearance in total so far, and there were four more appearances to come before his ascension, 40 days after Easter. But on this day, it was in their world, the world of the fishermen, and the disciples were out fishing on the Sea of Galilee. They had caught nothing all night. Jesus redirects their netting, and the result is a huge catch. And John reports with a real eyewitness vividness that it was 153 large fish. No one knows why it, it was counted. No one knows what the significance of 153 is. The Bible has many numbers in it which are special, but not 153. But people settled that it was just plenteous. His blessing was plenteous because of his resurrection. Possibly it was every species, known species on the planet. Elsewhere in the Gospels, the net breaks. Here it is full, but remains intact. First the beloved disciple, and then the others recognise that the familiar Jesus, the crucified Jesus, is the stranger on the shore, inviting them to breakfast. Jesus has promised to make his disciples fishers of men, that is, all people, 
in all their diversity. What an encouragement to know that Jesus will direct their mission and its fruitfulness will depend on the risen and soon to be ascended Saviour, who is himself the director of the church's life that he is about to build from Pentecost, 50 days after Easter. Jesus, the sensitive pastor, now restores the thrice-denying Peter with a threefold repetition, do you love me? And we heard Joanne say that with the word Simone and ask the question. The last time Peter was at a charcoal fire, he denied knowing Jesus. Now he affirms his love for Jesus. Peter's sin and failure, which caused him such anguish, had to be faced and dealt with even if the dealing with it hurt. But with God, failure is never final. It doesn't have to be final for any of us. Nothing is wasted that has happened. And here is the condition of fruitful service, dealing with the sin and failure in order to make us whole again. And this is an important lesson. I once played for a Sunday league football club in my teens. I was quite promising. <laughs> Well, that's funny, but that's good. <laughs> I was quite promising. A long time ago, like Peter, amongst the disciples, seemed to be very promising. But then I was injured, uh, and I hoped I could play on. The coach said, no. You will let yourself down, the team down, and the club down. You need to be fit again to be useful. It says it quite simply, doesn't it? We have to get rid of those things in our lives that will hinder us from loving and serving God and being useful and effective for others. We have to get rid of those things that hinder us. And Jesus knew it, that Peter needed to do this. Failure doesn't have to be final with God and we can seek God's forgiveness and help and he can do with us and equip us effectively for everything he wants us to do. And for Peter, the outflow of such love of Christ for Christ is seen in his future care for the sheep. Jesus is the good shepherd and Peter calls him the chief shepherd and sees him and sees his own role as being just a shepherd of God's flock. Peter's life would now be a life of shepherding God's flock, feeding his sheep and building the church. Feeding his sheep and building the church. As I said on Easter Sunday, within weeks, Peter was at the centre of the proclamation of the gospel to the world, as recorded in Acts. Chapters 1, 2, 3, and 4, and so on. Such was Peter's transformation by the resurrection that took place within him and continued with him right up to his martyrdom 30 years later. And as I concluded on Easter Sunday, the empty tomb was not good news immediately. To become the good news, Along with the tomb's emptiness, there also had to be an encounter with the tomb's former occupant. The disciples' imaginations needed to be burst open by the resurrection, and that was about to come. And on the first day, all this was quite unimaginable, but Jesus didn't leave it there. Even more unimaginably, he starts to appear Jesus met Peter, Peter on the beach and changed his life forever, taking the brokenness of Peter's denial and turning it into a, a restatement of belief. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus finally knew he meant it to the end, to the end of his life. In spite of all the mistakes and denials and failures, 
Peter's declarations of faith became the rock which the church was built on. It must have been a good rock, because it's still going 2,000 years later. A church can be a place where failures find forgiveness and mistakes can be mended and even become a means to grace if we ask God to work on them with us. The resurrection was one of the greatest, if not the greatest, miracle of all time. The miracle of the fish and the miracle of Peter's transformation. And those miracles continue today. Amen. For our second hymn, we're going to sing the hymn entitled, God Sent His Son. The chorus says, and it's quite well known, Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. And for Peter and us, encountering the living Christ brings about such a transformation for us. Let's stand to sing, God sent his son.
our sacrament of communion together, a simple communion. We are still scattered a little, but we are brought together as we remember. Let these symbols of bread and of wine help to make Jesus real to us in his body and his blood. A body that was broken for us and blood that was shed for us. And in this sacrament we are made one with him, delivered from the power of death into his kingdom of love and light. Let us pray. Almighty God, we remember that Jesus was born of Mary. He lived our common life on earth. He revealed your love as a father. He showed us the way to live. He suffered and he died for us. And on the third day, you raised him from the dead and he is present with us now through the Holy Spirit. In his presence and in the company of all your people, we celebrate the Lord's Supper. Amen. Amen. On the night of the crucifixion, when evening came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover meal with you before I suffer. And he took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it, and gave it to them, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. Gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives to Gethsemane. Of course, that story is still so fresh for us after Good Friday. Now let's sing together our communion hymn just to help us reflect further on this remembrance. <laughs> Do this in remembrance 
of me. The body of Christ broken for us. Let us take the bread and eat.
We pray, pray for those who are hungry because of drought, human foolishness or human greed. May the truth of Christ transform our world. Lord, in your mercy, we are yeah, our Amen. Amen. <laughs> Loving God, we pray for those who journey through life, whose journey through life is filled with pain. For those who are ill and whose illnesses domi dominate their whole of their thinking and every part of their lives. For those who may never recover and those who care for them. And those who work or serve in a hospice, a home or elderly or a nursing home. May Christ join them in their journey and may they, may they find new hope in him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Almighty God, we continue to pray for the people of Ukraine, for those hiding in basements, for those living in trenches, for those traumatised by all they have seen and endured through abuse and imprisonment and torture. We pray for those who have lost loved ones through the shelling, through the defence of their country, and for all those now living as refugees. We also pray for people who feel forgotten as the attention of the world's media has moved elsewhere. And we think of those in Afghanistan and in Syria and in the Yemen and all places of war and hunger. May they all encounter the risen presence of Christ in the ruins of their lives and in the rubble of their cities. And so, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is Crown Him with Many Crowns. Crown Him, the Lord of Life, who triumphed over the grave, and who died eternal life to bring, and lives that, and lives that death may die. And for all those who do cry in this world, is all there is. Is this all there is? We pray that they may know the living Lord, the resurrected Lord as truth. Let's stand to sing, crown him with many crowns. <laughs>
thank you for joining us today here at church, online, or read at home. And it's been good to worship together and to celebrate again the resurrection of Jesus Christ that changed everything. Thank you. <laughs> we have hope, and because he lives, we can face tomorrow, and life is worth the living. A closing prayer, let us pray. Lord Jesus, as you walked on the shore at Galilee to meet your disciples, meet with us, we pray, to bring confidence where there is fear and purpose where there is worry. And may each of us experience your work of transformation in our lives and that second chance in the days ahead. Amen. And so to you, dear church family and friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be, give you peace. Amen.